By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing a match of Seven Point Singleton, and I haven't done that in a while, but there's actually a lot of Singleton on this channel. I have a playlist full of Singleton matches. So if you're enjoying this match today, um, check out the description below there. I will put a link to the uh, Singleton playlist. So that's that's going to be fun if you like the format. Um, so what does it mean, Singleton? Well, the name already sa it says it. You can only play one card of each in your deck. Hence the name Singleton, right? Makes sense. Now, this is seven point Singleton, meaning that we've got a points list. You can see that right here. Um, so you can only spend seven points in total um, on the cards with points allocated to them. So for example, uh, you cannot play Ancestral Recall and Soul Ring in the same deck because then you have eight points, which is more than seven, right? So you've got to make some, some difficult choices. Now today I'm playing against a brand new patron, Wayne. Wayne, thank you for supporting the show. And when you become a patron at a certain level, you can uh, play a game against me. That's this game. And he said, I want to play Singleton. So we're playing Singleton. And uh, I'm happy, Wayne, that you're giving me that uh, opportunity. Now, Wayne is playing a uh, blue-white control. So pretty traditional. But because it's Singleton, there's some really cool cards in there that you don't see in your regular old school format. So I'm looking forward to discuss the deck with you. And he's playing against my mono-white artifact deck. And I'm just, I'm happy about this deck because it gives me an excuse to play with Argivian Archaeologist. And Argivian Archaeologist is again one of those cards that all of a sudden is playable in this uh, Singleton format. So I'm really looking forward to show you the decks. I've got lovely deck photos of both decks. Now before I do that, first a quick message from our sponsor, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old-school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 3 for one Trading for sponsoring this video. Okay, and we are back and ready to dive into the deck decks. Now, before I do so, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to go to the games first, check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do, it, to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And now I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with uh, the deck of my opponent, Wayne. Let's take a look at his blue-white control list. And here we see the deck of Wayne, so blue-white control. And what I really love about Singleton is that all of a sudden, the cards that you normally don't see, you do see even in the better decks in Singleton, right? So we see a wall of water, which I love, absolutely love. It's an 05 wall for two blue and one, which doesn't see any play in any other format, I, I think. But please correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I play it sometimes in kitchen table games because I love the art so much. And the card's not that bad. I mean, it's five toughness. Uh, for three mana, which is pretty reasonable, and you can pump it up, which can make it really difficult to attack into. So I, I can understand that it's kind of playable in this format. Another card that I notice here is Flood. So Flood is an enchantment from the dark, and for two blue, you can tap target non-flying creature, and um, you can just keep doing that. So if there are two creatures and you've got four blue open, go for it, tap, um, tap more creatures. And of course, both of these cards, Wall of Water and Flood, really kind of tell you a lot about what this deck wants to do. This deck wants to control the board, have a long game, and then, you know, take over the game, probably win. Um, you see more cards that kind of fit into this strategy. Uh, we've got, of course, Wrath of God, which is very good at kind of cleaning the board and, and reset the board. Um, we also have, of course, some, some enchantment artifact removal. Uh, White, of course, is very good at that. We have a disenchant, and we cannot see the other cards there. There's a lot of glare, but I'm just going to assume. I think one of those cards is Preacher, which again really fits that control theme. But I think one of those cards will also be Divine Offering, which is just top artifact removal because you also gain life. That card's going to be really good against me, by the way, because I'm playing a, a deck with a lot of artifacts. Talking about artifacts, we also see Rod of Ruin, and Rod of Ruin. I, I, I'm a little bit concerned about all the pinging cards in the deck here of Wayne. You know, that's it's looking pretty good. He's got Rod of Ruin. Um, he's got Protocol Sorcerer. He's got Pirate Ship. 
he can clone that of course so he can start first of all killing all the smaller stuff but if he gets more of these fingers he can start killing bigger stuff and that's really a concern because i'm playing with a lot of like one toughness two toughness three toughness creatures and if he has enough of these pingers you know that can get quite painful now he's also playing with quite a lot of uh, flyers air elemental the mahamoti sarah angel uh, we also see of course surrender Pafrit in here surrender Pafrit, i'm a little bit surprised about that because it's more of an aggressive card than a control card then again it's three mana for a three four flyer so that alone makes it worth it um, i'm really happy to see more walls in the deck because walls for me it gives me such an old school feeling and to see a format where walls can be played i think that's fantastic we see wall of swords i personally think wall of swords is the best wall in the format uh in old school it's one white and three for a three five flying uh wall i think it's quite good i think the stats are really nice for four and it can block a lot um then one card i want to highlight which i think is just awesome that you're playing it i think what's the name again i think the card's called crystal rod so you've got a whole series of these right for each color you have one of these and crystal rod is one to cast um pay one and you can do that anytime a blue spell is cast and then you gain one life and this card is just hilarious it's a card you actually only see in alpha and you see it in alpha because with the alpha rules whenever you play a blue spell you can um, use the crystal rod 10 times if you've got 10 mana so you can net 10 life so there it's really like a life gain tool but under the modern rules in current errata you can only activate it once for each in this case blue spell but you also have a white one uh, you know you've got a black one a red one a green one and this is then the blue one um, but yeah my point is you just don't see this card and I actually think but I'm not I don't know enough about seven point singleton to to be 100 percent sure of this but i think you hardly ever see this even in singleton so i think it's really cool wayne that you've added this card to your list you know it gets i like it it gets character um and then of course because it's blue we also see all those counter spells right spell blast counter spell power sync uh we see that that counter spell from legends for one blue and one uh, i'm gonna sh i'm gonna show it and then you'll know the name but i forgot the name um and then we've got mana drain uh, control magic which i think is really good in this format luckily we do not see a skull of arm that's another card that's actually playable in singleton that says a lot about also the speed of singleton you have some more time usually in singleton so you can play cards like skull of arm which is not in this deck but it can work really well with steel artifact and control magic we do see a control magic in this deck by the way i do not see a steel artifact so that's good news for me because i'm playing with a lot of uh, artifacts and then we also see the hive which is a super good card and guess what i'm also playing with the hive so maybe we're going to get a hive battle who knows i'm um, talking about that let's take a look at my deck white artifacts and here we see my deck white artifacts i guess you could also call it the archaeologist uh because i'm just you know i'm loving our giving archaeologist i think it's such a cool card it's one of my favorite cards as a kid i've got a full play set but it's also really hard to play with it in like competitive old school magic still it's a cool card so i'm really happy i can play it today that in the singleton format it's really a well respected strong card so that's really cool so let's just take a look at this card right it's a one one for two white and tap you can take target artifact from your graveyard back into your hand so i find it also very flavorful because it's an archaeologist what does an archaeologist do it digs up treasure artifacts of course so from your graveyard it come back, comes back into your hand now the art is always a bit of a riddle to me because look at that he's he's looking like a 70s professor right um so it's not really magic art in that sense because it's so modern but th that even makes me like the card more and also the nickname the shirt is kind of funny because it's almost like he's wearing no pants because those those pants are kind of the khaki chino that he's wearing so it's 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 easy to kind of fit think okay he's not wearing any pants he's wearing a large shirt which is kind of funny as well hence the name the shirt now um i started with this card while i made the deck and i instantly thought okay i just got to play a lot of artifacts of course starting with antiquities the set that the archaeologist is from so i got tonis's coffin in then when i had the coffin in i thought okay i gotta go with the counter theme so i put triskelion in and i put tetravis in because with the coffin what you can do is you can put those creatures in the coffin then when you untap the coffin those creatures come out come into play tapped unfortunately not untapped but what happens is you get the etb triggers again so those counters add up so a trike comes into play with three plus one plus one counters when it comes out of the coffin the same thing happens and the counters don't disappear from the trike so then it comes back as a seven seven 
right? If you do it again, it comes back as a 1010. The same goes for Tetravis, the same goes for Clockwork Avian. So, I mean, you can just do a lot of shenanigans with it. And I thought that would be really cool. Um, and then because it's Singleton, you've got so much space in your deck, which I love. Um, so I was playing Artifacts and then I thought, okay, now I've got to play Angelic Voices. So Angelic Voices is uh, a card from uh, Legends, two white and two to cast. And it's an enchantment that says creatures you control get plus one, plus one, as long as you control no non-artifact, non-white creatures. Well, guess what? I only control white and artifact creatures. So that's awesome. So it's going to pump my entire army. Then when I had this card, I'm like, okay, now I have to play with the Hive, right? Because the Hive makes 1-1 one, one Artifact Wasp tokens, and they become a 2-2 two, two because of Angelic Voices. So this deck kind of made itself. And then, of course, I also thought, okay, I got to add just some good white cards that I know that you can play in Singleton and you cannot play anywhere else. So I thought Veteran Bodyguard, that's going to be really cool. I thought um, Wall of Swords is going to be really cool. So... I'm just really looking forward to play with this deck. I have played with it before, but like I said, I don't play Singleton often. So I'm just I'm just excited, you know, to play with these cards. I also love the fact that I've got Castle in this deck. Uh, Castle, kind of the, the, the errata on, on Castle changed, or should I say the Oracle text, actually. Um, so it says it gives plus O plus two to an untapped creature. That creature loses the bonus when it attacks. Now, in the new rules... Uh, a creature that stays untapped always gets the bonus. So that means that my Sarah Angel is always a 4-6, also when I attack with the Sarah, because the Sarah doesn't uh, tap. The same thing goes for Yoshin Soldier. It's a 1-4, it keeps the bonus. It's a 1-6. So it's just, it's. I'm just looking forward to little little shenanigans like that, because I, I just don't use use or play with these cards often. So it's just, uh, it's exciting. I think maybe I should have added the Hand of Justice, also because I have an Ecation Town. Now, I don't have that many white creatures in there. That's why I didn't do it. But I am a big fan of Hand of Justice. So looking at this deck again, I'm like, maybe I want to play Hand of Justice. Um, I, I also have uh, Argivian Blacksmith in this deck, which I think is awesome. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, it's a card I only play in Singleton. Uh, I can tap it to prevent two damage to target artifact uh, creature. And I think it's going to be so cool to use this on the Juggernaut. So I can just keep attacking with the Juggernaut and kind of save it with my Blacksmith. That is something I'm really looking forward to. I don't know if it's going to happen, but um, I think I think this is this is a pretty good deck actually as well. It's not just a fun deck; it's also I think quite quite a competitive deck in uh, in Singleton. I mean, it's going to be tough because blue white is is known to be like a good deck, and there's a lot of counter magic. But I think it's going to be a tough fight. I think it's going to be fifty fifty. Um, anyway, this is my deck. We looked at the deck of Wayne, and uh, let's start. I can't wait. Let's go to game number one. Game number one, here we go. Wayne sitting on the left with his blue-white control deck. So we're playing Singleton today. I'm sitting on the right. I'm playing a mono-white with artifacts. And I'm taking a mulligan here, going down to six. And uh, yeah, let's let's see what's going to happen. So Wayne starting here with uh, an island. Ooh, Tappy's got a first turn play. Oh, there's the crystal rod. I'm so happy, Wayne, we're seeing the rod. I was really hoping that we would see the crystal rod. It's awesome. Yeah, he's actually reading it to me just to make sure that I'm like, okay, this is the Lucky Charm, the Crystal Rod, right? Yes, yes, it is. Awesome, Wayne. Really awesome. I'm starting with the planes here. And uh, do I have a turn one plane? No, I don't. Just passing the turn here back to Wayne. So Wayne drawing a card for turn. And there's a plane. So he's got both colors and passing the turn back to me. So uh, this is as to be expected. Uh, both decks are not super fast. I guess my deck is a little faster than Wayne. Wayne, of course, wants to keep mana open to counter. I have a, a Mishra's Factory here. So I could consider attacking with that next turn if Wayne doesn't play a blocker. So there's another blue for Wayne. And uh, is he going to play something out? That is always the question. Are we going to see something here by Wayne or just a pass? Look at that tapping out. Oh, there's a De Devant Archer. And I believe it's a 1-2 creature, right? You can tap it and then deal 2 damage to target attacking creature or blocking creature, I think. So again, asking Wayne, what does that card do again? And that's always a good sign. I think you're playing with fun cards if your opponent asks, what does it do again? It means you're not playing with staples. And so far, Wayne, what you're playing out here is pretty impressive. First the Crystal Rod, then the Archer. And oh, look at this. Yeah, this is a desert. And uh, it's got a pretty cool altar. 
made by uh, Thijs, a Dutch artist. And there's the attack, the 2-2, two, the two, two. of course the archer still having summoning sickness, so we see uh, Wayne here dropping to 18. So that is pretty sweet, passing the turn back to Wayne. So let's see if maybe next turn I can cast like a Juggernaut or something, that will be quite nice. Okay, there's a desert for Wayne as well. And there's a pass turn, untap, upkeep and a draw. Let's see what I can find. I'm probably not going to attack anymore. Look at that tapping out four. What are we going to see for four? Okay, there's a castle. I wanted to say if it's a juggernaut, then Wayne can actually kill it with the archer in combination with the desert, I believe. Because then you can deal three points of damage and the um, juggernaut, of course, having three toughness. First playing out this castle. There's a Tolaria here being played out by Wayne. So it's a card from Legends, a legendary land. You can tap it for a blue or tap it to take away banding. And I believe you have to do that during the upkeep, if I remember correctly. Wayne uh, tapping three here, two blue and one white. Oh, there's a Rod of Ruin. Yeah, this is so annoying because with that Rod, he can start pinging. And it also means that all the 1-1 one, one creatures or the 1 toughness creatures in my deck are kind of like useless until I can get rid of that uh, Rod of Ruin. Of course, I do have the castle now, I'm realizing. So castle is quite good in protecting my 1-1s, one as long as I keep them untapped. Ooh, just passing. No, for a moment I thought it was just passing. Okay, playing a planes. So having five lands, Sarah Angel would be quite nice. That would be sweet. So I wonder what I'm going to do. Looks like uh, I'm a little bit in the tank. You're probably not happy. Oh, I am attacking here. Okay, no. No, I'm not. Tapping four. Oh, there's a Jam Day Tome. Okay, that's pretty decent. I think Jam Day Tome is pretty good. Could start drawing some extra cards, trying to find uh, some stuff. Oh, there's a Disenchanto on the Tome. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. So losing the Jam Day Tome. Because I was like, okay, he only has a blue and a white open. So he probably, you know, he can play Power Sync. Um, you know, but he doesn't have access to like a counter spell. And I had one mana open for a potential power sink. Anyway, look at this Wayne tapping six. Oh, Mahamoti Jin. Oh, oh, this is a problem. This is a problem. Unfortunately for Wayne, he doesn't have a mana open to gain a life with the crystal rod. Would have been quite sweet to see him use his crystal rod at least once, but maybe he doesn't need it at all. He can just start hitting me for five for the air. I really need. Something, if I have a wall of swords, okay, this is something. Look at that. Finding the answer, a maze of if, this is perfect. A card from the dark, a land. And you can tap it and then it takes target attacking creature out of combat and it uh, neither deals nor receives any damage. So yeah, this is perfect. And I think Wayne doesn't have any land destruction in his deck. So yeah, this is really good for me. Passing the turn, look at that. Okay, so let's see what I can do. Okay, there's a planes. Gonna tap three white and the desert. Ooh, gonna tap five. Do I have a Sarah Angel perhaps? Oh, a veteran bodyguard. So two seven now because of the castle. This is kind of a combo as well, combining castle with veteran bodyguard. So veteran bodyguard is a two five creature. And of course now a two seven because of castle. And all the damage dealt to, uh, by you by creatures goes to the veteran bodyguard first. So let's say Wayne attacks with the 5-6 and imagine I didn't have the maze. Then that damage would be dealt to my veteran bodyguard instead. So my bodyguard would get uh, 5 damage. And I think one of the things, of course, here's the ping by uh, Wayne, by the way. So I'm dropping to 19. I think one of the problems I have with the design of the bodyguard is that I wish the bodyguard would just always soak up all the damage. So for example, if, if my opponent plays a huge fireball, that damage, oh, control magic. Is he gonna steal my bodyguard? Okay, he is. <laughs> nice, well done. I can't blame you, Wayne. The bodyguard's quite cool. Uh, but what I wanted to say is that it would, would have been really nice if the bodyguard would say it just soaks up all the damage. So if your opponent plays like a fireball of 20 on your life total, it goes to the bodyguard instead or, or a lightning bolt for three, you know, that would make the bodyguard 
better and more playable because at the moment now, in regular old school, it's not really playable. Anyway, I'm taking on my turn. Obviously, this uh, control magic is bad news, but at least I still have my mace. My mace is keeping me alive here. Oh, there's a spirit link. I wonder what I'm going to play it on. So I'm playing it on the Mahamoti. Okay. So there's that coin indicating the spirit links on the Mahamoti. I'm not a hundred percent sure if I should have played this. On the other hand, that maybe Wayne would have just attacked with everything. And then I only could have used like one, one mage. You know what I mean? He would have attacked with the bodyguard and the Modi and I would take some damage. Now I don't, but yeah, this is, I mean, it's still tough, you know? I think for me, the best card at this point would definitely be like a Wrath of God, right? Because I've got no creatures on the board. So I could play Wrath. After it has resolved, I can attack with my, uh, my factory. But the game is pretty locked at the moment. Ooh, there's a Clockwork Avian. But that's not going to do much. It's a 1-4 it's a, a that comes into play with 3 plus 1 plus 0 counter. So it's a 4-4. Four, four. And of course, with the castle, it's a 4-6. But I mean, that's not gonna, gonna win it against Mahamoti. And Wayne could even just take the damage. And, uh, you know, let the bodyguard soak it up. Oh, but are we gonna see a counter spell? Yep, there's the remove soul from Legends. So that's gonna take care of the Clockwork Avian. Remove Soul, again, one of those cards that you see in Singleton, but hardly ever see outside of Singleton. It's a good card, and I think when you're, when you're building, especially a multiple color deck, and you want to play counter spells, you should just wonder, okay, what am I going to use the counter spell for? And if you want to use it against creatures anyway, then Remove Soul is your way to go. I mean, of course, a regular counterspell is much better, but you don't always have two blue, especially when playing with multiple colors. Uh, here we see a Felwer Stone. A card from the dark. You can tap it to make any color of mana that your opponent can make. So in this case, only white. And Felwer Stone is really good in old school because usually your opponent will play a City of Brass. And then when your opponent has a City of Brass, the Felwer Stone can make any color mana. Again, some damage here from the rod. So I'm dropping to 18. So yeah, for Wayne, yeah, this is not ideal. On the other end, he's the control player. He's just gonna keep all the counter spells in his hand probably and just gonna keep pinging me on end step. And it's funny because I always play with the Tim, of course. So I'm really used to be the one who's actually pinging on end step. Oh, this is even more bad news. This the hive is, is really a problem. And here you can really see the control element of Wayne, right? He's just making sure that he doesn't die. And then from that point forward, he's gonna probably take over the game very slowly but he is going to do that he would see an a ao pile it's hard for me to pronounce a card from um, fallen empires two to cast one tap and sec deal uh, a damage to any uh, two damage actually to any target here we see uh, the rod of ruin again i'm going to drop to 17 and just very very slowly wayne is getting more and more control And I just need to, uh, to find some artifact destruction here. I wonder now that I'm looking at this, if I shouldn't play uh, a dust to dust in this, uh, in this deck. There's a Yoshin Soldier here, a 1-4 from Antiquities. And we see Wayne here on end step. He's going to make a token and he's going to ping me for one. Yeah, so this is just not great. And this is a problem for me, of course, because if every turn Wayne is able to make and a 1-1 one, one flyer and deal one damage to me, then yeah, it's going to go slow, but eventually he will win this game then. So I have to get out of this, this situation here. And yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see what Wayne can do now. I mean, he's also still on 18. He's really high. I'm on 16. And he's just passing the turn. Yeah, why would he not? He can just on end step make a token, deal a damage. 
I mean, life is good for him. It looks like I'm going to tap four. Do I have a wrath? No. But this is something at least. This icy manipulator, I mean, at least I can do something with it. But I don't think it's enough. Like I could, for example, tap the Mahamulti and then attack. And here we see Wayne again making a token dealing damage. But yeah, then he still has the bodyguard. And I don't have a lot going for me, right? I've got the Ocean Soldier and the Factory, which is not much of an army. Wayne, you're playing another, uh, another island. So I'm pointing out that synergy between Castle and the Ocean Soldier. I'm pretty, pretty, knowing me, I'm pretty happy with myself, but I shouldn't because I'm slowly dying. Wayne having out two of those Wasp tokens. And I'm assuming he's uh, just going to pass turn here and just, uh... yeah, exactly. He's fine. He's fine with the way this game is going. So I guess I'm going to tap something here. What am I tapping anyway? The Modi, perhaps? Oh, it looks like I'm going to tap the Hive to kind of force Wayne to use the mana. Making a potential power sink less powerful, I guess. Maybe that's my reasoning behind it. And I could now also in the upkeep maybe tap the second blue. I didn't, but that could be another reason, of course, because then he doesn't have like double blue to cast a mana drain or counter spell. But uh, yeah, passing your turn here to Wayne. And Wayne again pinging me here. Oh, look at this. I mean, it's like I'm seeing myself dying, but in slow-mo. <laughs> and Wayne, of course, having three of those 1-1 one -one flyers. Now he could at certain point start attacking with the flyers. And, oh, there's a Samite Healer. Oh, it's so cool you're playing that card. Samite Healer, a 1-1 one, one for 1 white and 1. You can tap it to prevent 1 damage to any target. And uh, now I'm tapping the Veteran Bodyguard, it seems. I wonder why. No idea. Let's see what I got from the top. Because playing it out straight away, tapping 3 white. Oh, there's a Jalem Tome. Okay. Usually when I draw the Jalem Tome, like, okay, this is why I shouldn't just drop every land on the battlefield. This is why sometimes you got to keep your land in hand. I wonder what that one card is, because it looks like I don't want to cycle it away with Jalem Tome, so. Maybe it's still, maybe it's, maybe it's, it's like a one, a good one, one creature, like Preacher or something. Although if it is, then I, I might as well just play it out. And here we see Wayne, of course, again, pinging me. So I'm dropping to 13 and making another token yeah it's going so well here for uh, for Wayne remember I have no flyers right I just have that one yeah now he's going to use that dice it's going to be hard for us though to see but I think it's four the count is four so we're going to try to track that as well the count is four and the life of Wayne still 18 I mean, you could consider attacking with all four. That would mean I would take two damage and I would kill one. So it's probably better just to wait. It looks like he's passing turn again. So I'm going to tap something. And I'm going to take my Icy out of the sleeve, apparently. No idea why, but... Oh, taking another sleeve. Maybe the sleeve was damaged. Anyway, um... oh, he's attacking, actually. Oh, he is attacking with the four wasp tokens. So I'm tapping a wasp token. I'm trying to kill one. Oh, he's going to, of course, use his Samite healer. Oh, 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 that is so cool. Because he's got the Samite now, he can save his token. So then the attack also makes sense. I'm going to drop to 11. So I'm going to take two damage. I'm going to use an AO pile now to kill the Samite healer. Okay, so it took me a moment to realize how good that or helpful that Samite actually is in this situation. So that actually cost me a point of life, that realization that it came so late. Um, drawing an extra card with Jalen, but I have to discard. So apparently I just found a uh, planes on top. So cycled that away, two cards in hand. I'm on 11. I'm in a bad spot for sure. I'm gonna tap six or four. I guess I, oh, two for the Jalen and four for Angelic Voices. So Angelic Voices, is going to give all my artifact creatures and white creatures plus one plus one. I mean, it's a good card, but 
I mean, maybe I should have kept it for the Jalen Tome. Maybe I have another card in hand that's good with Jalen Tome. I don't know. Oh, there's a Spell Blast, though. There's a Spell Blast by Wayne. Blasting away my angelic voices. That is too bad. And he's going to make another token. And I think... I mean, now it's five, I believe. Because I didn't manage to kill one. I think now with five tokens, it's going to add up. I'm on 11. He didn't ping me at least because he played that Spell Blast. He's going to tap five here. Ooh, there's an Air Elemental. Is he going to use the Crystal Rod? I don't think he wants. He wants to keep five open for the Hive. So Air Elemental on the board. Yeah, it's... I'm, I'm like sinking. I'm like in that, uh, that quicksand. But I'm, I'm going very slow. <laughs> I'm like James Bond who's getting, the, the super villain wants to kill me, but he's, he's, he just has this very elaborate plan, so it's going to take a long time. But I think that in this, in this edition of James Bond, I'm actually going to lose. Okay, there's a disenchant, finally. What am I going to disenchant? Like, Crystal Rod is a pain, the Hive. I guess I got to go for the Hive, right? Or am I going to go for, for Crystal Rod? Sorry, uh, Rod of Ruin, of course. I'm keeping Crystal Rod of Ruin, excuse me. I, it looks like I'm going to go for Rod of Ruin. <laughs> it's going to put me on 10. Oh, there is the Preacher. So I did have the Preacher in hand. The problem, of course, is he's just going to give me a, a Hive token. Then again, I can use that Hive token to block. Oh, no. Swords to Plowshares. Are you kidding me? Ah. <sighs> I am going to go back up to 11, but this is really, really bad news. Like, I needed this Preacher, because with that Preacher, what I could have done is steal a Creature from Wayne, probably a 1-1 Flying Hive token, um, use that as a Chum Blocker, and just keep then stealing Creatures, or at least make sure that Wayne couldn't attack anymore for the time being. But uh, yeah, this is, this is bad. Wayne, you're doing really well. It's bad for me, it's great for you. And Wayne playing now a Wall of Sorts. And I wonder if he's going to attack. Like he, he, he can. He's got Air Elemental and he's got five one ones. So I'm going to tap the Air Elemental here and he's not going to attack. Okay, so he's just going to take turn. He wants to make a bigger army, I think. Before he attacks with the Wasps. I'm going to tap four white here. What do I have? Okay, Thomas's coffin. That's actually, this is a really like, I can slowly kill the wasp tokens because if the tokens go out of play, if they're exiled, they just disappear. They don't go back when the coffin untaps because they're tokens. The problem, of course, is that Wayne can also make a token each turn. So that basically means that the token count is going to stay the same, which I believe is at six at the moment. It's hard to see, but I believe it's at six. Wayne finding another island. And yeah, I'm still in a pretty bad position. I think that's the big conclusion. Yeah, look at that. Using the, uh, the Tannis' coffin, so he's going to go back to five. Going to untap. So I could put one again in the coffin. Going to put him on four tokens. But like I said, he can make a token again. So he's probably just going to be stuck at uh, five. Okay, there's a Sarah Angel. So, I mean, I'm liking my cards. It's not like I'm drawing bad cards. I can't complain. It's just that Wayne, you know, it's just... Drawing slightly better cards and having the answers. Wayne is going to tap a lot here. This is a little, little scary, Wayne. Do you have a counter spell? Maybe a power sink? I only have four, five lands, so he's got a power sink for six. Ooh, is he making a mistake here? What am I doing? I can... Okay, I'm going to put the air elemental in there. In response, I'm going to tap down. I think he didn't see. I think I assumed that he tapped enough when we were playing it, but actually he didn't. So uh, we both we both didn't really pay attention, did we? Because he plays the power sink for five. I'm having three planes, a um, Mishra's factory, and a desert open, so I could have tapped that. Anyway. I chose to instead... Put the air elemental in the coffin. 
and passing the turn. But those counter spells, Wayne, are really good. They're really hitting, uh, hitting the mark for you. And I think this is the third counter spell you've played out, right? I think I saw the, um, the counter spell from Legends. And here we see a Maze of If, by the way, making matters even worse for me. Oh, man. Oh, man, I am slowly dying. I was going to attack with everything because I got the desert tap. So with all his uh, tokens, so I'm now on seven. This is so bad. Going to look in my graveyard. Going to tap three whites. What do I have for three whites? I don't think there's... Oh, this is actually quite nice. This is pretty good. I give you an archaeologist. The reason my deck's called the archaeologist is because of this card. So I give you an archaeologist a 1-1. One, one, can pay two white and tap it to bring back target artifact from my graveyard into my hand. So that's pretty nice. But it's very slow though. It's very slow. So maybe there's also an incentive for Wayne to start attacking faster. I can get my AO pile back with the archeologist. So every turn I can now AO pile, which is quite cool. But Wayne is still on 18. So it's really too high to like kill him quickly with that AO pile. So I've got that maze. I've got quite a lot of defenses actually. Icy manipulator, Tonsis coffin, desert, maze of if. It's going to be tough for Wayne to attack through. And I think Wayne right now is like, I'm really not happy with the archaeologist. I want to put some pressure on you, but how? He's got six, I believe, six 1-1 one -one wasp tokens. Yeah, he's going to go into combat. So before he goes, I'm going to use the Icy. I'm going to tap down the Air Elemental. So let's say he attacks with the six 1-1s. One -ones. I can send one back. Yeah, he's going to attack with the six one ones. I can put one in the coffin, so that's just going to disappear. So he's got five left. I can send one back. So four are still attacking. So I'm going to drop to three. Oh, that's quite low. And then, of course, I can kill one. Oh, man. But this is not good enough for me. He's now got four of those wasp tokens left. And remember with Spirit Link, by the way, because I'm thinking about that now, I first take the damage, then gain the life. So if he attacks with Modi as well, oh, 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 this is um, going to be problematic. But I guess I'm going to send the Modi back anyway. But that does mean then that I cannot send back another Wasp token. And I'm talking about the next combat, of course, not this combat, because in this case, Wayne didn't attack with, uh, with the Modi. So I've got three life. This is probably my last turn. I've got no cards in hand, I believe. Yeah, I won now after the draw. But this is, a, this is a tight game. Like, we both have pretty control builds now that I look at it. Maybe Wayne a little bit more than me, but both of our decks are pretty control-ish. Yeah, putting that AO pile at the top. So, I mean, it's nice I can take the AO pile back. It's going to kill another Wasp token. He's got four of those, right? But how much mana do I have? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mana. Two white to get the AO pile back. Two to play it out. One to use it. So then I'm five mana like in. So look at that. I'm going to do it right now. Going to get back the AO pile. Going to play the AO pile. So I guess I have enough mana to use the pile, kill a wasp token, to also use the Tonsis coffin and to use the Icy. Is it enough though? That's the question. It is really cool, by the way, to see the archaeologist in action. And it looks like I'm kind of organizing my lands to make sure that I have enough. Oh, I also want to use the book. I'm thinking about, can I also use the book? The book's cost is two. So I think I can't. So look at that, really putting all my mana into place. Yeah, it's three for the tomes. So, uh, three for the uh, Tonsus Coffin, I mean. So I cannot use the Jalem Tome. But I do have enough mana for the rest. I wonder if I can survive next turn. I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose this first game. But it's, it's always cool to see, can I stay alive? Can I get one last draw out of this? And maybe I find a Wrath of God. I still think Wrath is good. 
So he's going to count. I think he's got five of those wasp tokens, right? I'm on three. Yeah, so now he's going to attack. So I'm going to tap something down. I'm going to tap down the Mahamoti. I'm going to kill one of the wasp tokens. So that's four tokens left, I believe. Now remember with desert, I first take the damage. Now he's going to attack with the air elemental and the four wasp tokens. Uh, I can put one in the coffin. So that's going to disappear. Oh, he's got three left still. Oh no, he's got three left. I think I'm dead, right? He's got just enough to kill me. He just has enough wasp tokens. Yeah, I can kill one after damage is dealt. So I actually can't. Wow, Wayne, you got this. Wasps for president. Yeah, wow, wow, wow. What a grindy, grindy first game. Um, we are going to shuffle up and then uh, start with game number two. Game number two, here we go. Look at that. Now it looks like Wayne is taking a mulligan. I took a mulligan in uh, in that first game. Now it's Wayne who's doing that. He's on the draw. And I'm playing Ecasian Store. And uh, again, a card I hardly uh, play with. It's a signed copy, which I'm showing now to Wayne. Guess I'm proud of that. <laughs> Ecasian Store is one of those storage lands from uh, Fallen Empires, by the way. It comes into play tapped. And then during your upkeep, you can put a storage counter on it when it's tapped. And then uh, if you untap it, you can tap and, and get an X amount of white mana. In this case, this is the white version. Um, equal to the amount of storage counters you take off. So here we see Wayne playing an island and passengers turn to me. So I'm going to put a storage counter on there. I'm going to play a white. And I guess in this deck, you could say the storage counter works really nice because it's a slower deck. So you can just build up enough mana to make a play. And also, ooh, there we see a strip mine. This strip mine is really annoying. As soon as my, my storage land like gets any value, you can just strip it. So look at that, untapping it immediately. So probably just gonna use it as a, as a one mana land. Taking it off, let's see what I can play. Okay, there's a Jalem Tome again. So we saw the little book in that game one as well. It's gonna be quite useful now early in the match. I can kind of select the cards in hand that I uh, wanna keep and that I don't wanna keep and uh, draw a different card for that. So I have some card selection, I guess. Wayne tapping three here. Ooh, there's Wall of Water. Nice, I love it. Wall of Water, one of the cooler cards in your deck, Wayne. Love the art of Wall of Water. Uh, Richard Thomas art, by the way. And he has, with all his walls, he has like the mage standing on the other side of the wall, which is really cool. And it's always a discussion, like is, is that the mage who's casting the wall or is that a mage who wants to go through the wall? Let me know, what do you think? Is it, so is it, your opposing wizard that wants to get through the wall and you're protected by your wall? Or is it actually you who's casting the wall? That's the big question, chicken or the egg. Uh, Wayne here playing a planes, by the way. And what I wanted to say about my storage land to get back to that story, is that one of the reasons to play a storage land in this deck is because of a rocket launcher. And here we see a ghost ship. So ghost ship, a two, four flyer from the dark. And uh, you can regenerate it for three blue with art by Tom uh, Vanerstrand. And uh, Tom loves to draw anything with boats. Almost all his art in Magic has, has a boat on it. Even Ecation Town, which is in my deck, also has a boat on it. Anyway, tapping for white here. Ooh, Wrath of God, which is really good. Because I have no creatures. And Wayne's got two. Maybe I'm playing the Wrath a bit early though. There's, you know, I mean, you know what I mean? Because it's singleton, so you only have one Raph. And Raph is so good. Then again, Wayne was stepped out. I had a problem with the 2-4 flyer. But I don't know. Look at this, more pressure. So what if I would have just waited one turn? But it's always uh, easier to say that in hindsight. The Surrender Befreed here hitting the board. And look at my storage land, uh, by the way. Three uh, storage counters on, on there already. What would be really nice on the uh, Serendip is Spirit Link. Gonna tap five here. There's a Clockwork Avian. Okay, that's a 4-4. Four, four. That's pretty good. 
And I'm, I'm just still thinking, oh, it's actually an 04 comes into play with three plus one, uh, plus one plus O counters. It's not a one four. I think I earlier said that it's a one four, maybe in a deck deck, but it's actually not. It's an 04, of course. And remember, it's a clockwork creature, meaning if I attack or block with it, it's going to lose uh, one of those counters at the end of the combat. And you can put those on again during your upkeep, but that does mean that you have to tap the, uh, the creature. And I really love the flavor of that because it's a clockwork, right? So you wound it up or wind it up. You say wind it up, right? So you wind it up, but then of course it does tap itself because then it's kind of out of commission for that turn. Anyway, uh, Wayne here playing uh, again the Samite Healer. I love how Samite Healer is working in Wayne's deck because now he can use the Samite Healer to prevent the damage from the Surrendip. Oh, that's just, that's so cool. Look at me go though, attacking here, also realizing that the Samite Healer now still has Summoning Sickness. Wayne taking the damage, so he is going to drop to 16. This is the first damage I think he takes. Or I guess also has taken one point of damage from his uh, Surrender Perfeet, so I guess he's on 15 then. And I'm of course losing a uh, counter there on the Avian, so it's now a 3-4. Ooh, lose, using my storage land here. Again, the coffin. So I think with the coffin, I can start using... Oh, mana drain. Yeah, this is very unfortunate. Counter magic is so good. Looks like I'm going to have a second play. Okay, also playing an Icy. So maybe I should have played the Icy first. Two cards in hand. But uh, it's not looking that bad for me. But looking back at it now, it's always easier, of course, in hindsight. But I'm thinking, uh, shouldn't I have played the Icy first? So look at this Wayne using his Samite Healer to prevent the damage. I love it. I really, really love it. Ooh, there's an Icy for Wayne. Oh, oh, oh this is going to be one of those annoying Icy battles. Oh, this is so not cool. Gonna tap five as well. Air elemental. Okay, now I'm in trouble. I was in a pretty good position, but now Wayne is doing much, much better and finding the icy and finding the air elemental. This is this is bad news. Looks like I'm gonna keep the avian tapped, gonna put the counter back, so just gonna accept the fact that I'm gonna take some more damage next turn. But as a 4-4, at least I can change it, uh, exchange it for the air elemental. The problem of, well, I've got multiple problems, but I think the biggest problem here on the board at the moment is actually that Icy. I have to try to uh, get rid of that. Tapping three whites. Okay, let's see what I can do. Oh, this is pretty good. Finding the Preacher. I have to say my draws are pretty good. I mean, Wayne, you, you also cannot complain, but finding the Wrath. Finding the coffin, finding the icy, finding the four four flyer. The J of course, Jalem Tome probably has helped with that as well, kind of selecting my cards. And Wayne again preventing his damage, by the way, from his own surrender. So he's uh, still on fifteen. Yeah, gonna go in here for seven. Yeah, that's a problem. Dropping to ten here. Oh, ho, ho, ho. my, my, my. But Wayne only has one card left. Oh, I'm going to play Swords of Plowshares in the end of my turn. So I'm not going to use that to prevent any damage. Ooh, going to take care of the Semite. So now uh, he's going to get a life. So he's going to go back up to 16. The reason, of course, I'm going to go for the Semite Healer is because I want to use my Preacher. And now he has to give me one of his Flying Creatures. I'm probably going to wait until he untaps and take a da takes a damage. Oh, I'm impatient. Why am I doing this? I have to admit, I, or admit, but I have to be um, strict about my own play here. My play is bad. There he taps down the uh, Clockwork Avian, by the way. And there's a Veteran Bodyguard. Okay, so it's kind of nice. So remember, the Veteran is not going to soak up the damage from the Surrender because it's only combat damage that he soaks up. But, um... Yeah, that was that was a bit of a sloppy magic for me. Uh, there's my uh, surrender perfeet that I took over. 
Should have waited until the upkeep because then it would have gotten an untapped creature instead of a tapped creature and Wayne would have taken the damage. And now I'm going to take a damage next turn. So Wayne has two cards in hand. And I'm, I have to say, it's looking good for me again. So I'm probably going to tap down the ice here exactly and I'm just going to attack with my creatures. Ooh, I got to keep my uh, my preacher tapped though. Exactly. <laughs> it's a kind of a habit, right? So I'm going to take a damage, going to drop to nine. Going to draw a card with the tome, got to discard another card. Discard a planes. Now remember, uh, Wayne is still on 16, so it's pretty high. Oh, a disenchant. Wow. Really finding good cards here. I think I should just attack with, um, just with the Surrendip, I think. Right? Am I passing? Really? Why am I passing to turn? I am a little confused, to be honest. I mean, I'm in such a good position. I could have just attacked here with the Surrendip. Then he could have blocked. Surrendip would have died, which is fine. There's the attack here. I'm going to tap it down and see why. I could just... Okay, I'm just going to soak up the damage, I guess. Ooh, there's a Wrath of God. Oh, that is unfortunate. This Wrath. Oh, 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 I'm in such a good position. Oh, this Wrath of God. It's, I mean, I'm still, it's still good. I still, I mean, I've got the, the Jalem Tome. I've got the Icy. I can't complain, but this Wrath of God is really what way I need it. I was in the driver's seat for sure. And here you can see, by the way, that I don't play with Preacher often, right? Because I, I don't really know what to do with the card. Even though I know the card, even though I've played with it, even though when I look at my own... Uh, ooh, discarding a Spirit Link. I wonder what, what card I have in hand. Is it so good? Did I choose it over Spirit Link? Uh, but what I want to say is, guys, I can even analyze now looking back at the match, seeing what I'm doing wrong with the... Um, ah, seeing what I'm doing wrong with the, um, with the Preacher. But still, when you're playing with it, it's different, you know? Anyway, uh, choosing a Ecation Javelin near here over a Spirit Link. Hmm, that is a bit of a doubtful decision, to be honest. We see Wayne here tapping four. What's he going to cast for four? Oh, there's a Rod of Ruin. Oh, no. He's going to kill it. Oh, man. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, probably wanted to keep the Cajun Javelin here because it can kill like the, the pingers on the side of Wayne, except for Rod of Ruin. Still have the Jalem Tome, so that's still good. Passing to turn back. But Wayne, again, having that annoying Rod of Ruin. Going to tap five. What does he have for five? Ooh, there's the hive. Oh, man, this is annoying. I'm going to tap down an island here. That makes sense. Got to think about potential counter magic. Going to use the Jalem. Gonna dump a land, gonna tap four. What do we got for four? Okay, there's a Jade statue. That can do some work. I am a little bit worried about this Hive again, you know, because he can keep making one ones, block with it, just annoying. And let's see what Wayne can do, just passing a turn. Look at that, untapping my... Uh, Storage land. I've got uh, six counters on there. Do I have a big plan with my storage land? Gonna tap two white. No, gonna tap the storage land. It's gonna take off four counters. Gonna animate and use the Jalem Tomes. So I now have a 3 6 Jade statue. Let's attack. Let's try to deal some damage. I'm going to tap two more. 
What am I going to do? Maybe a divine offering, an AO pile. Okay, going to attack now. He's going to make a token. Looks like in response, I'm going to use the AO pile to kill the token and then deal three points of damage here. Yeah, I'm going to kill the token. Mm. I don't know if, if I don't know if I'm really happy with the way I'm playing. I guess I guess my idea is the longer the game takes, the bigger chances that Wayne's gonna take over, and that's why I'm playing so uh, aggressively, I guess. But I'm kind of burning through my resources, like an AO pile in exchange for a one-one token. That is not great. So Wayne tapping three here. What's he going to do for three? Ooh, there's a Tim. Yeah, like for example, I could have killed this Tim with the AO pile, but I don't have it anymore. So I'm going to tap the island again, which I think is a good decision because it means that uh, Wayne cannot uh, counter. But yeah, I'm, draw I'm drawing really good this game, but somehow Wayne's still very much in it. Gonna draw another card here with the Tome. And now I've got to discard. I mean, the hard part, of course, of the Tome is you do immediately have to discard. So it can be tough. I wonder if I have a Resurrection now in my hand. That's why I'm going for my Graveyard, perhaps. Still have to discard a card with the... Uh, with the tome. Yeah, and this of course a moment in the game where you'd much rather have a Jam Day Tome instead of a Jalem Tome. Okay, going away here, uh, discarding a Mishra's Factory, animating again the Jade Statue, attacking with the Jade Statue. And look at that, he's gonna take damage. And I actually have him on 10, but the life total there says 9. Or is it 10? Yeah, so I think he's on 10, if I'm not mistaken. Gonna play a maze. Yeah, I'm on 8 as well. That's also a problem. 8, and he's got a Timmy, and he's got the uh, Rod of Ruin. Oh, man. What am I gonna tap here? I wonder what I'm tapping. I mean, Wayne is on 10, right? So it looks like I'm tapping the Hive. Now I'm taking my turn. I'm gonna use the Jalem Tome again. I have to say the Jalem is great. Like it's doing so much for me in this game. I can just dump all my lands and get useful spells in return. Animating again, attacking here with 3-6. Uh-oh, what does Wayne have? A swords? Ah, oh, swords to plowshares. Doesn't mean I'm gonna go back up to 11, but yeah, I really needed this. It's my only kind of attack weapon that I have. Ay, 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 ay. And there's the end step double ping with Rod of Ruin and the Timmy. So I'm gonna drop back to, uh, to nine. So I went up three life, but losing two instantly. I'm on nine at the moment. And now my opponent, Wayne, is still on 10, finding a Mishra's factory. Yeah, it's not looking great. Then again, I've got the Jalem Tome, so I can go through my graveyard faster. So now I'm end step again using my Icy. What to tap here, really? Like, it's difficult. I think I'm now asking how many islands do you have? I could consider tapping that single island. So it looks like I'm going to tap the hive. And now he has to make the choice. He's going to make a, a one on wasp token. I need, I need a divine offering. Divine offering will be super good. I can play divine offering or on Rod of Ruin, or the Hive. I guess I should go maybe for uh, for the Rod of Ruin, and then I would gain three life, and of course destroy the artifact. That would be ideal. 
I guess I'm not playing Divine Offering here. Going to tap four instead. Oh, a Rocket Launcher. Hmm, that's interesting. Problem is that Wayne is just a little bit too high. I can use, of course, a trick where you use Rocket Launcher um, at the end of your end step. And then I can use it an extra turn. A lot of glare, by the way, on the lands there of Wayne, unfortunately, but we know they're just basic lands. And of course, I can use the rocket launcher here also to kill the Tim, so that's going to help me a little bit. But these are interesting games. It's like, it's like chess. Both of our decks are so incredibly controlling. So Wayne's on 10, I'm on 7. Tapping his four lands. What are we going to do? What are we going to see for 4k? There's a phantom monster. Yeah, that's quite good. I got the maze, of course, but it does mean that I have to maybe take an extra damage from one of those wasps. And that's, it all adds up, you know what I mean? So I'm going to use the icy here. Tap down another blue. Not using my uh, rocket launcher. Could have done that here. Tapping two. What are we going to see for two white? Or I'm just going to use the Jalem Tone. That's another option. Really in the tank here, it seems. Yeah, I am going to use the Jalem Tome. Okay. And you can see at the pace that I'm playing at that I'm like, okay, I think I still should be able to win it, but I'm not sure how. <laughs> Like, I also don't want to die. Oh, Archaeologist in the bin. Of course, it's a 1-1. One, one. You can just kill it with a Tim or a Rod of Runes. That's probably why I'm uh, putting it in the graveyard. Ay, 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 ay. Those pingers are really good. They're really controlling the board. It's so annoying. One card in hand. And I do have, I believe, four, five, eight mana. So on end step of Wayne, I could use Rocket Launcher four times. But I don't know if I have the luxury to wait that long. That's, of course, another question. Yet, oh, two cards in hand, I guess. Passing the turn. Okay, Wayne's going to strip. Oh, he's going to strip my, uh, my storage land. Oh, that's annoying. I mean, in, I guess I'm not asking if, if, if he could give me a moment. Yeah, I've taken the damage. Gonna go to six. <laughs> it's, it's tough to look back at this second game because I kind of, I just the, the small mistakes that I'm making, that's truly annoying because it's so close. And Wayne, you're playing really good, I have to say. A big compliment to you. And I mean, it's not like I'm making huge mistakes, but I just feel like there were a few moments in this game. But I'm not dead yet. I'm on six. And I'm using my icy here. Okay, I'm going to tap down the hive. So I guess this is on end step then. Yeah, this is on end step. So at the end of the end step, I'm going to use my rocket launcher. So I'm probably going to kill the Tim and I'm going to kill a... A wasp token. He's going to ping me one last time. I'm going to drop to five. And now I'm going to take my turn. So draw a card for turn. So I could use the rocket launcher again. I could tap out and kill, for example, the phantom monster. So Wayne's still on 10. So I think three damage on his life total is not really going to be that helpful. So I could just, you know, what I said, put six mana into the rocket launcher, deal three damage to the phantom monster. I would also keep a mana open to use my icy. The problem, of course, of that line is that I still have Rod of Ruin to deal with and I'm on five, but... Ooh, gonna tap. Yes, I'm gonna tap it. 
Oh, I'm going to play a Tetrava, so I'm not going to use the Rocket Launcher. Instead, I'm going to play a Tetrava. Are we going to see a Counter Spell? Uh-oh. Yep, a big Spell Blast. A Spell, he's got enough to Spell Blast it. Oh, man, I think this is... This is the nail in the coffin here. This is a mistake. I should have used the Rocket Launcher. Knowing with, with all the amounts of Counter Magic that Wayne is playing with, I should have known better. Ay 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 ay. This is painful to look back at to be honest. I think this 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 tapping out for the Tetravis is, is is just stupid. Because you know that Wayne has a lot of counter magic. You saw that in game 1. You know it's blue white control. Ay ay ay. And now it's looking really bad for me. I'm on 5. Wayne's going to tap 2. Okay, there's a white knight. And I'm tapping. What am I going to tap down? Yeah, I'm going to tap down the hive here. Okay, let's go. I'm still alive. Yes, I made a mistake, but come on. Maybe I've got a resurrection in hand because I'm going to the graveyard now, going through the graveyard now again. Resurrection uh, would be quite nice. Two white and two, a sorcery that says bring back target creature from your graveyard onto the battlefield. Ooh, I do have a resurrection. Okay, now we're talking about, about something. Now we've got action. Hopefully Wayne doesn't have a second counter spell. It looks like he doesn't. So now we're back. So Tetrov is a 1-1 one, one flying creature. It comes into play with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counter. So it's a 4-4. Four, four. Am I going to use my Jalen Tome? I wonder what that last card in hand is. The thing is, I'm still on five. I mean, he's going to ping me with the rod. It's going to put me on four. Okay, I'm going to use a Jalen Tome. I mean, I'm on in, in survival mode, right? And this is again where, of course, it's easy looking back at the game, right? But this is again where if I would have kept the Spirit Link earlier, I know it's a while back, but if I would have kept that, I could have put that on the Tetravis now and gained some life. But no, I chose to play out the Cajun Javelinier instead that I lost to the Rod of Ruin instantly. And of course, I couldn't know that Wayne had the Rod of Ruin, but still... Same thing goes for the Aeopile play on that uh, Wasp token. But anyway, I'm still alive. I'm on four. Got a 4-4 four, four flyer. He's passing the turn. So it look like, looks like I'm going to tap something here. Probably going to tap, yeah, so wanting to tap down the Hive, so he responds, Wayne is going to make a 1-1. Uh, a one -one. Oh, I'm going to take off. This is, okay, so I'm probably doing this so that Wayne's going to ping my 1-1 my one -one flyers. Oh, an angelic voices. Oh, that's interesting. So now they all become 2-2s. Two of course, Wayne can respond and kill one of my 1-1 one -one tetravites. He's not doing it though. I think he's really focused on just killing me. There's a juggernaut. Okay. Okay, now we're talking about something. Passing the turn here to Wayne. Wayne's got enough mana, I think, to deal one more damage to me. So he's going to put me on three. Oh man, this match. What a thriller, this game too. Oh, 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 oh. But next turn, I think I've got a decent attack. Now remember, I do have uh, an untapped icy. Uh, sorry, no mana anymore for my icy. Oh man, this is a tense battle. This is a tense battle. So I've got four two twos because of Angelic. Hey, there are my Tetravite tokens. And I've got my... Uh, my 6-4 now Juggernaut because of the Angelic Voices. I've got 3 life. 
My opponent Wayne is on 10. He has been on 10 for quite a while. I have to say, Wayne, when I'm looking at this, I'm like, man, we got to play Singleton more often. Uh-oh, it looks like Wayne's going to go in for an Alpha Strike here. Realizing that now I don't have that Icy. So he can animate the factory, then he can attack with a 2-2 White Knight First Strike, a 2-2 Factory Worker, a 3-3 Phantom Monster, and a 1-1 Wasp Token. I do have a lot of blockers though. So I wonder if it's the best thing for him to do. Like, if he would attack, I would probably, I can block the Wasp, it would die, because my Tetravites are 2-2s because of Angelic Voices. I can trade a Tetravite for a Factory Worker. I can actually also just chump the Phantom Monster. And I can block and kill the White Knight with the Juggernaut. So he doesn't really have a good attack. And the reason that I, that I don't want to use my Maze is because... If I don't use my maze, um, he's stepped out and I can attack with even more of my creatures. So yeah, Wayne, understandably so, really taking his time to think, okay, what are my best options? Knowing that I'm on three, so he needs, after this, two more turns if he wants to ping me to death with the Rod of Rune. The question is, is he going to get two more turns after this? That's the big question. It also means that I only have two more turns to kill Wayne. I mean, this is, this is 10 stuff. This is just a super close battle. And now I'm also thinking now about the start of game two, by the way, where I kind of used that preacher in the wrong way. If I've done that differently, then Wayne would have been lower now than 10. Maybe he would have been on nine. Maybe he would have been on six. Anyway, all that doesn't matter now. The question now is, is Wayne going to attack? I think, with the analysis that I just gave, that it's better for Wayne to just pass the turn. That's exactly what he's doing. I'm not surprised. I haven't seen Wayne making a single mistake this entire match. I'm going to draw a card for turn here with the Jalem. going to put a card away. It's a Plains. Is this something useful? A Divine Offering can make such a big difference here. I think of that card in my hand as a Divine Offering, that's the game changer. So now for me, it's also the question, what, what can I do? Because if I go in for an Alpha Strike, I probably cannot kill Wayne, and Wayne's going to kill me on the crackback. But then again, I only have two more turns. I have to attack with the Juggernaut, which is a 6-4. I mean, this is really tense. Look at that. Just going to attack with the 6-4. I mean, he can make a token. And just block with the token. He can just jump with the token. He already has a token that he can jump with. I, oh. But if I would attack with everything... I would, die, I would be dead the next turn, so that's also not a solution. Because remember, he's on 10. He's simply too high up. I think if I would be Wayne at this point, I would just jump maybe with the Wasp or the Knight. And of course, the reason that, I mean, Wayne can also make, of course, a Wasp token. He does have the, the Mishra's Factory, so he could just make a Wasp block with it, still keeping three lands open to use Rod of Ruin, put me on two. It looks like he's, he wants to double block. So is he going to block with the Phantom Monster and the White Knight, perhaps? So this is a 6-4. Yeah, or is he going to block with the Wasp and the Phantom? I 
yeah, we're discussing here. That's always hard to follow. So we're going to kill all of them. Does it mean, does he have a balance in hand? Maybe. Uh Oh, if he has a, <laughs> he has a balance, because this is an odd block for Wayne. So I think he's got a balance here. Yeah, this has got to be a balance, right? Or not. Does he even need a balance? I mean, he's, I think he's going to win regardless. Does he have a wrath of God? I'm cleaning up already, but what does he have? Okay, putting it back. I'm sure, I'm sure I'm convinced that he has a balance. I mean, I'm hoping he doesn't, but... Or he has a balance or a wrath. But he already played out the wrath of God, by the way, so I think it's not that. He's going to tap... Oh, he's going to tap five for a pirate ship. Then he's going to play a balance. Ah, because he doesn't want to lose... I still had a card in hand, though, so he, could, he might as well just could have played the balance first. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He's, gonna, he's so going to win this. Yeah, this is oh, so annoying to look back at this. I'm so close. But he's closer because I'm on two. Anyway, I have one, one more turn, right? Because, because of the balance in the pirate ship, where I think, I think my line would have been uh, to just go balance, keep the pirate ship in hand, but probably he didn't see that I still had a card in hand. Um, you know, and then just use Rod of Room, put me on one. The next turn you would have won. He's going to win now anyway, unless I have an answer to the pirate ship or the Rod of Ruin. Do I have a Divine Offering? I think Divine Offering is the only card that can give me a little bit of extra time. Divine Offering. No. Tapping six. Ooh, a Triskelion. Oh, wait. Oh, I can buy myself one more turn. I can kill the ship. Ah, oh, Triskelion is so good. If it would have just drawn into that card earlier. Anyway, going to kill the, the ship. And I mean, I should just attack, right? With the 2-2. Two -two. Attacking here with the 2-2. Two -two. Okay, going to put him on 8. And Wayne has, I think his life total on 7, but I believe he's actually on 8. But maybe I missed the damage somewhere in this match, but I believe he's on 8. Anyway, I just need too much time because he can... But this is such an exciting game, too. I still have one more draw, though. Who knows? Cause st I still think if I can find a Divine Offering from the top. Going to tap the uh, Factory here, apparently. Draw for turn. The annoying thing, by the way, looking at the mana of Wayne, that he's got enough mana to make a Hive token and... Uh, ooh, there's a Chaos Orb! Oh, ho, ho, there's a Chaos Orb! I can flip! I can flip on Rod of Ruin! Oh, this is so awesome. Please don't have a counter spell or a Disenchant or whatever. Just let this happen. Okay, he's going to ping me. I'm on one. One little life. I'm going to flip. I need to hit this. I need to hit it. Yes! It's a hit. Rod of Ruin is gone. I'm on one. I'm on one. Yes. I need to attack here. I need to attack with my 2 2. Also, my trike is also a 2 2. Look at that. I'm really like in the tank. Like, if I attack. Should I should should I just attack with both? I think just attacking with my Tetravis. 
No, going with my Triskelion instead. I think I should attack here with both. So he's going to drop to six. Oh man, this is exciting. He's going to make, of course, a token on end step. So he's got a 1-1 one, one token. He's on six life. Oh, ho, ho. can I actually make it a 1-1 one, one here? That would be sensa sensational. There's a planes. He's on one. He's got one card in hand. He's on one. So what I could do here is tap the factory. Okay, so it looks like I'm tapping the token of Wayne here. I mean, all of a sudden I'm back into this game. Wayne on six, I'm on one. Okay, this is actually useful. So I can use the strip mine to strip the factory. So Wayne having, of course, at 1-1, but it's tapped, I believe. I think I should strip the factory here. I'm not sure why I'm really doubting this. Seems like a no-brainer. I'm also maybe thinking about stripping the desert instead. But remember, my 1-1 one, one creatures are 2-2s two because of the angelic voices. Really in the tank here. So really trying to figure out what the best thing is to do. What is wisdom? That is the big question. I, I, I'm not sure why I'm... I mean, I'm on one, yes. So you got to really think about what to do. I yeah, okay. I'm finally going to use the strip here. I think I should just strip the factory, right? Going to go for the desert instead. Oh, Why do I keep making mistakes in this game? There's the attack. So if, I mean, I guess I'm afraid because Wayne had enough mana to make a 1-1 one, one flying wasp. Block it. Okay, he's gonna take the damage, gonna drop to four. And then he's gonna make a wasp token. So he's got two wasp tokens. I believe that's a two, at least. So if I'm not mistaken, he's got two wasp tokens, one on flyers. But remember, I've got an icy manipulator and I've got a maze of if. Uh oh, what's he doing? Ooh, disenchant. Ay, 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 ay. What's he gonna disenchant? Gonna disenchant it to Skellion. Yeah, now I think I'm dead. He's gonna animate. He's gonna attack. I can tap down to 2 2, send back one of the 1 1 flyers. And oh man, am I gonna lose this now? Oh, oh god. Oh god. Okay, this is, this is, oh man. I get. Okay, I get it. I wanted to get rid of the desert. Why? So I could attack still with the um, with the two two flyer. But I have to say, I mean, again, Wayne, you've played bri brilliantly. So big compliment to you. You've done a fantastic job. Also, your deck, great, well, well done. But I'm, it's kind of frustrating to look back at my own um, decisions here. Because I think in this second game, I had the best papers. I should have I should have won this second game. But 
That is magic, of course. The quality of the player has a big influence. It's not only about having the best cards, even though some people uh, say that old school is all about just having the best cards. No, it's not. Just the player is so incredibly important. And I think today's match is a really nice example of that. And I think, and this is something that I know of myself, and maybe you recognize that as well, is that the more often you play with the deck, the better you get at it. And for me, you know, hardly ever playing singleton, now going to play singleton, I can just see that I'm making some mistake and also mistakes. And also, what you have to realize, of course, in singleton is that you only have one of each card, right? So you really gotta think about how you manage your resources. And I think that's something that I can learn from this second game, how to manage my resources a lot better than I did. But anyway, it was a very entertaining game. Congratulations, Wayne, for winning. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching another episode, of course, right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And uh, before you go, please leave a comment, share this on your socials, and uh, a thumbs up is always very much appreciated. YouTube loves that. And uh, talking about appreciation, you can also become a patron of the show, just like Wayne. Uh, check out patreon.com slash timmytalks for all the information. And if you become a supporter at the top tier level, um, then we can actually make an episode together like I did here with Wayne. So if you want to play against me, you can choose the old school magic format. Uh, please find out how on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay, and uh, I guess now we're ready to go to the end scroll. Let's go! What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.